HIV, human immunodeficiency virus, is a big topic here. But right, let's break it down, and I'm going to show you exactly how HIV is different than AIDS, and how a lot of the tests that we do for HIV is um, difficult in terms of diagnosing when you initially get HIV. So, HIV is transmitted to other people through blood, body fluids, mainly semen and vaginal secretions. Um, but the biggest thing to contract the virus is through blood. That's one of the biggest. So if your patient comes in and let's say sharing needles, or they're drug users, or let's just say you're in the clinical setting and you accidentally stick yourself, it depends on how much blood you got into, you, into your body and how big the viral load is from your patient. So let's break it down here. So HIV is transmitted to others through all stages throughout HIV. And as I said, the higher the viral load, the higher chances you have at getting HIV. So what the heck is viral load? Let's get into that real quick here. I'm going to bring you guys closer here so you can see. So when your patient gets HIV, on day one of contracting HIV, you have a very high what's called viral load. Basically, the virus is attacking your body, and your body doesn't know how to defend itself. So what your body naturally does from these B cells, which are also known as your plasma cells, your body develops antibodies. And these antibodies um, are for viruses, bacteria, and it pretty much tells your body that, hey, this person's bad, let's go attack it, and tells all the other white blood cells to go attack it. So, your body is building up these antibodies, or what's known as basically your tags, that tells your other white blood cells to go attack it. Your viral load is up here, so it takes time for your body to communicate that, hey, I'm positive for HIV because I have a high antibody tolerance to HIV. So your viral load is constantly high in the first two to four weeks of this virus here. Your body does not have enough time to communicate to itself that says, hey, I am building up um, antibodies, or basically a defense system, to fight off this um, this uh, HIV virus. So, two to four weeks, your first two to four weeks, you don't know you have HIV. The test that we do doesn't know you have HIV. This is what's called your ELISA test, which directly tests for antibodies against HIV. So, in the first two to four weeks, this is what's called your window period. Your patient's going to come in with flu-like symptoms. Your patient's going to come in with night sweats with possibly a fever, having muscle aches. And usually, we're gonna ask your patient a number of questions, blah, 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 because we just think it's maybe a viral infection. All the tests for HIV come back negative because we do the ELISA test. And this HIV, we're like, oh yeah, you don't have HIV because the ELISA test said you don't have any antibodies for HIV. The thing is, most patients, in this two to four week window period are positive for HIV. They just haven't had the, enough antibodies for the ELISA test to confirm a positive result. So we're gonna diagnose your patient as negative HIV and maybe viral meningitis. That's usually uh, the biggest uh, diagnosis or a flu. So your patient just has a virus. They don't even know you have HIV. You don't even know they have HIV because all the tests you did for the rapid test was negative. Now time goes on and let's say there's three, four, or uh, six months down the line, or maybe even a few years down the line. And now your antibodies are up here and your viral load's been humming down here. Let's say your patient gets sick and now your viral load jumps up because your body's immune system goes down and that's when signs and symptoms of HIV start. So at that point, what your body's gonna want, what they're gonna want to do is they're gonna do another ELISA test on you 
and say, oh my gosh, you have really high antibodies for HIV. And that's when you get a positive result for HIV. Now there's a few other tests that I'll go into, but that's the basic concept of this window period, which is also called acute retroviral syndrome. And that's what's known as your window period. You have these flu-like symptoms, you have muscle aches, sweats, uh, you just feel like crap and it feels like uh, you're sick. All right, now for your three different tests for HIV, you have your ELISA test, which is your enzyme-linked immunose, and I'll explain what that is. You have your Western blot test, as well as your viral load test, and they follow this sequence here. So remember, in your ELISA test, you have very high viral load in the beginning. So actually, I can come down here. I can, let me draw it right here, actually. You have very high viral load. The ELISA test doesn't test you on if you have HIV or not. It doesn't test you on viral load. The viral load test does. What ELISA test tests you on is how well your body is responding with your antibodies. And if you guys remember, your antibodies are made by your B cells and your B cells underneath your B cells is your plasma cells and these plasma cells shoot out like little name tags or we can say spray paint all over the infecting organism and these little name tags bad 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 they say hey WBCs attack and that's how they attack the infection here okay so primarily your plasma cells and B cells, okay? So your HIV has attacked and pretty much taken over your CD4 cells, which is also in the family of lymphocytes, but its dad is T cells. And this CD4 cell has been attached almost like a pirate ship from HIV, and HIV infuses its DNA into CD4, and now has control of the entire army. And we know that CD4 is this general type of CD4 cell. If you guys need more information on the entire immunology, I have an entire video series on that. So go be sure to look at that at simplenursing.com. So we know that the general is in charge of the army. They have these B cells, natural killer cells, macrophages, and this HIV has taken control of that. So our entire army is now in limbo, not attacking. So, your antibodies are taking a long time to label this HIV. Usually the antibodies take anywhere between 3 to 12 weeks of labeling. Okay. In this case, HIV, it takes 36 weeks at times. It can take that long to properly build up enough antibodies. Now, the ELISA test, it will pick up antibodies in the first two to four weeks, okay? But with that being said, you can have a false negative. And a false negative basically means that you just got infected with HIV, and you go to the clinic, get your blood drawn. They're checking your low antibodies. It's before the two to four week marker. You have a negative, basically, low antibody screening. This is a false negative because you can still have HIV with your viral load or HIV load being up here, but your body is taking a slow time to build up an antibody immune response and properly label the bad guys. So this is what's called your window period. That's when we get false negatives, okay? On the other side of things, you can get a false positive. False positive means that we have high antibodies. And high antibodies can come from any number of reasons. Your patient has hepatitis, high antibodies. Your patient is a mother, or pretty much newborn mothers. Your patient is an IV drug user. Your patient has history 
of malaria. Whatever the cause, we have high antibodies. And since the ELISA test doesn't specifically test on the high antibody content of specifically HIV, for any reason you can have high antibodies, and they're like, hey, well, this person has a positive ELISA test, there must be positive HIV. Not true. That's why I don't like the ELISA test for HIV. The reason we do ELISA tests, though, is because it's inexpensive, it's a rapid test, really rapid screening, boom, 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 you're in and out, okay? Now, if you do have a positive ELISA test, then they'll go to the Western blot, okay? So they're not just going to say, hey, you have HIV, see you later. No, they're going to do the, another test. So the Western blot test, this test is more specific, though. Still test on the antibodies that are made by your plasma cells. Still testing those tags, seeing do we have a tag. But these tags are specific for HIV. We're testing the specific HIV antibody tags. So instead of saying a general antibody tag, we're detecting serum HIV antibody tags specifically for two to four antibodies, that will give you a positive test. If you have two to four positive antibody tags for HIV primarily, okay? Now, in the confirmation of this test, they're then going to see, okay, you have HIV. How far along is it? Basically, how are your CD4 cells doing? Are your CD4 cells in the dumps because HIV has taken over? Are your CD4 cells lower than 200? And that's when we classify as the most severe cause of HIV, which is AIDS, when you go below that 200 mark for your CD4 cells. Then your patients, we basically, we're, we're trying to gauge how far along is our HIV. So the ELISA test, does your patient have high antibodies in general? Yes or no? If yes, go on to the next one, Western blot, confirmation test, I would call it, because we're confirming the LISA test. And then the last test we do is your viral load test. This is usually done during treatment because we want to see, is your viral load going down? Are you rebounding with your viral load? Are you going up? Where is the viral load going? Because we know that when you start, when you first initially get HIV, your viral load is very, very high because your body has not properly identified it with these tags, these antibody tags, okay? So, where is your viral load at? That's what we're trying to do with your viral load test. So, real quick, I know we went through a lot of information, but just please know, when you're initially diagnosed with HIV, when your patient comes in diagnosed with HIV, um, and maybe they're newly diagnosed, they have a high viral state here, okay? Usually they have a high viral state if they just got infected. So having a high viral state, they are very infectious. So people who have really high viral states, very infectious, and usually they don't even know they have HIV. So, remember this window period, because that window period, we usually get flu-like symptoms, we test negative for ELISA test, so we don't think we have HIV, and they're like, hey, you just have a flu, or you have viral meningitis, or you just have a virus, go home and sleep. Not true. So, if your patient does test negative, they have to follow up, um, especially after the two to four week marker to see if they're having any other types of signs and symptoms. So let's go on to the next lecture here with HIV. All right, so once your patient has tested positive for one of these tests here, now again, real quick, viral load test is usually for patients undergoing medication for HIV treatment. So it's very specific here. All right, so your patients have tested one of, one of these, um, have tested positive for one of these tests. 
How far along are they in HIV? Is it bad? Is it okay? Or is it very slow progression? Well, we look directly at your CD4 cells as well as your viral load. There's two different things here. So your CD4 cells is what I get into in the immunology lecture. Your CD4 cells are those generals that kind of tell your white blood cells what to do, who to attack, and how to defend the body. So your CD4 cells are usually in the 500 plus range. Now, right here, your body's defending itself. You still have HIV, but your body's defending itself against um, the common cold, against bacteria, against everything else that could affect your body. Now, when your um, CD4 cells or your policemen of the body go below 200, that's when we start developing major signs and symptoms and that is when you are diagnosed with AIDS, okay? So yes, it is true, everyone who has AIDS has HIV. Just like everyone who's a nursing student is a college student, okay? So you have to understand that everyone with AIDS is diagnosed with HIV. But, oh my gosh, I'm turning your camera here. But not everyone with HIV has AIDS because some patients, they stay above 200 CD4 cells for a long time and they don't develop signs and symptoms. So if your patient has, hopefully I'm not getting you guys seasick here with my cameras. If your patient has an opportunistic infection, fancy words for the policemen of the body, the CD4 cells, have dropped below therapeutic range. So all these infections that were there already are now attacking your body because there's not enough policemen. So your patient all of a sudden gets sick, like really sick. That is a big indication that they have developed low CD4 cells and have progressed into AIDS. If your patient has a viral infection, mainly herpes, and herpes doesn't mean always genital. They can get it on their mouth, on the lips but usually they'll get genital herpes if they contract type 2 herpes. But that's one of the other uh, indications that we have low CD4 cells. The body's policemen are not there anymore, you have to understand. And the last one is kaposis sarcoma, and that's just um, these blotches that almost look like pepperoni all over the body. So it takes about 10 to plus years for your CD4 cells to get down into this AIDS category, this 200 CD4 cell category. But the progression is slow and it is, it's even slower with our um, antiviral medication called HART, H-A-R-R-T medication, which we'll go into. So before we go into education and pharmacology for your HIV patients, Let's talk real quick again about the diagnostic test, just to solidify it, make sure you guys understand it. So when you're diagnosed with AIDS, you must have positive for HIV through one of these three tests, okay? That diagnostic with AIDS means that you have less than 200 CD4 cells or you have an opportunistic infection your patient becomes very sick on just regular, from day-to-day -day types of um, encounters with people. So an opportunistic infection is just an infection or a bacteria or a virus that has been um, trying to attack your body. But now that we have less policemen, or basically less white blood cells, fancy words for um, a low immune system, your CD4 cells are less than 200 here. That's when it takes opportunity and attacks your body. So opportunistic infection and less than 200 CD4 cells is what we're looking for when we're diagnosing someone with AIDS. And that's because with HIV, you have that lower CD4 cell. So hopefully that makes sense. So let's get into our actions here. All right, so for our two biggest actions with any diagnosis in nursing school 
you have to understand that you have education and pharmacology as your two biggest nursing interventions. So for HIV, let's go into our education here for your patient. The biggest educational piece is prevention. We want to prevent the spread of HIV to other people because remember, HIV can be transmitted at all stages. All stages your patient is infected. There's no cure for HIV. All we can do is slow it down, okay? It's just like, well, not just like I was going to say, but it's kind of like COPD where you can't cure some of these diseases, but we can slow them down and ease the symptoms from progressing. Now, indefinitely, you cannot stop HIV altogether, but you can slow it down in the progression of progressing into AIDS or you can slow down the transmission of it. So prevention is big here. So education, educating your patients to have what they call the ABCs here for AIDS prevention. And this is um, not that's something I made up. It's something that the AIDS Council, uh, we did some research and they have ABC. And that stands for abstinence, be faithful, and condoms. Those are your ABCs. <laughs> so abstinence, be faithful, and condoms for safe sex. Now, the funny thing about this, though, is they don't even mention anything about blood. And blood is the number one reason people contract AIDS. So body fluids here, transmission. The highest is semen and blood. So I should have added semen in there, too. But semen and blood are the highest. Now the lowest is vaginal, whoops. The lowest is vaginal secretions, breast milk, amniotic fluid. For instance, your patient is infected with AIDS and they have a baby. That's very low that, um, it's low that your patient's gonna be infected with AIDS. So basically the newborn's gonna be infected with AIDS. I'm sorry, HIV, not AIDS. Um, and another lowest one is saliva. I think you have to drink like two gallons of saliva to get AIDS or HIV. Ah, HIV, not AIDS. All right. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, it's kind of disgusting. All right. So your highest, highest, uh, most potent way to get HIV is semen and blood. And the main ways is from being having sexual active, male to female, or anal sex. You can have, uh, what's it called, um, parenteral route, which is like your IV drug users. Or you can be in the clinical setting, get stuck. But usually hepatitis C and HIV, you get um, drug users sharing needles and very frequent drug using or very frequent needle sharing uh, will give you higher risk because we're talking about a blood-borne pathogen here. And number three, your prenatal or your perinatal is eight to 25% risk. It's not as high as your sexual or IV needle route, okay? So we have to teach your patients abstinence, be faithful, condoms, and we should actually add another one in there that says like don't share needles or watch yourself in terms of blood because that is one of the biggest ways here too. So what do we do for pharmacology? Well, remember you cannot cure HIV. You can only prevent the progression of it before it gets into that lower than therapeutic range and gets into AIDS, that's less than 200 CD4 cells. So how do we stop the progression of HIV and stop it from going into AIDS? Well, we use a very effective and very expensive heart therapy medication regimen. And what is heart therapy? Heart therapy is not cardiac therapy. Heart therapy stands for highly active antiretroviral therapy. All we're trying to do is break up the virus from replicating. 
stop the virus from becoming a high um, viral load in your body and stop the virus from not attacking your body, but becoming very powerful. We're trying to kind of dismantle the empire here. Now, there's no way to totally destroy the empire, but if we can dismantle the virus, we can stop it from progressing. So, we tell the virus to stop attacking the CD4 cell. So the CD4 cell is pretty happy. Virus is kind of mad. But we basically tell them to stop replicating. Stop taking over and pirating our CD4 cells and stop replicating. Now, this doesn't kill the virus itself. Remember that. It doesn't kill it. It just stops it. And the biggest thing that you have to remember, and I wrote it down over here, let me bring it in, is caution. Your patient uh, is drug resistance can occur. So if your patient does not adhere to the drug regimen, drug resistance can occur, and that happens with missing a dose or taking less than the recommended dose or rest, less than the prescribed dose as well. So education is huge because what we're trying to do is we're trying to get this virus to stop pirating our CD4 cells and stop taking out the military generals in our body. So if we're not taking the heart medication as uh, the doctor prescribes, it's not going to be therapeutic for attacking and dismantling your virus. It's the same thing as if your patient doesn't take enough warfarin when they have atrial fibrillation. They're not going to hit that therapeutic range. Therapeutic range is crucial, guys. So, remember, remember, please, that we have HIV. Your patients with HIV will progress into AIDS. Two totally different things, but remember, HIV, everyone with HIV will develop AIDS if they go to less than 200 CD4 cells. Bigger thing too is blood is the number one contraction, blood and semen, I should say. So educating your patients on blood and semen. And another thing to remember for your test is antiretroviral uh, syndrome is when you have a new diagnosed patient who has a high viral load and low antibodies, and this is called your window period. So, your patient is going to have ARS, acute retroviral syndrome. They're going to develop flu-like symptoms. They're going to be very sick, cold, night sweats. And this is when we usually miss the diagnosis. Okay, cool. So, if you guys haven't seen my video lecture on... Um, immunology, or basically how CD4 cells, what they do, who they control, I recommend watching that too. It's going to be located somewhere on this membership site. I'm sorry, on the page you're looking at on the membership site. All right, guys, let's go on to the next lecture here.